Hi, my name is Preston, and I work at Frictionless Commerce as a conversion optimization specialist. And my name is Rishi. I am the founder of Frictionless Commerce. Started the company nine years ago, and I work very closely with Preston. So Rishi, uh, when it comes to the work that we do at Frictionless Commerce, we kind of follow a very, um, a very laid out process. Uh, can you kind of talk about what that process is and how we use it? Yeah, I, I think that we look at this, uh, we look at what we do as an engineering problem. So we're like architects, for example, we're designing a blueprint for a home. If we, if we design the blueprint wrong, we are going to design a crappy home that's not going to be up to code or it's going to potentially cause a lot of damage for the owner. Um, so our, what we've done essentially is, you know, again, through trial and error, we've identified a process, an internal process that we use. And it, I think um, at this point, it's got 12 steps maybe. Um, and so we use this process where we have a systematic approach. It starts off by saying, you know, do we have a brief for this problem? Um, it ends by saying, have we completed all the items in our Todoist? Todoist is the tool we use to break up all the tasks associated with this project. Um, and we follow this methodically with every single project. And sometimes, you know, we have an in, we have a an instinct. I know you and I have had conversations about this. That you know, do we really need to be so mechanical with it? But but I think the discipline of following a step by step, it's just like baking, right? You, you we are a commercial kitchen, and we cannot afford to produce output that has variable uh, value for the client. So we want to be as predictable as we can, and that minimizes the risk for the client. So the CRO process that we utilize is designed to make sure that nothing falls through the cracks. Uh, we want to make sure that every single step, every single of our 16 tactics was utilized. We want to make sure that deconstruction was done completely. We want to make sure that the radius of focus, which is the target and pages connected to the target have been covered. Um, so that's that's uh, that's why we follow the process, and that's why the process allows us to drive incredible output for clients. Great. Uh, so one of the things we do when we're following this process is work within two-hour cycles. Yeah. Um, so can you talk a little bit of why, or a little bit about why we're using two-hour cycles versus like eight-hour cycles or four-hour cycles? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, again, that is something that we've experimented with uh, over the years, but. In very simple terms, I believe constraint drives creativity. So if I knew that I, there's this wonderful saying that says work expands to fill time. And so the idea is that by having a very specific amount of time to work on one dimension of a problem, we are able to, we know what the boundaries are, we can work within that, and we can identify very specific actionable insights in that two hour cycle. And so it's a way to kind of essentially manage our time utilization, but at the same time, put strong, put, put a strong incentive to produce an output. Mm -hmm. Now we work on multiple two hour cycles. Uh, so it, it all depends on what we've discovered. It all depends on what the scope of the project is, but we work in these two hour cycles because we want to kind of, it's, it's, it's like a, it's our second hand for the clock. Uh, this is how we measure progress. And so that's the reason why we work in two hour cycles. Great.